Vaccines are one of the most important necessary measures of preventative medicine. They protect us from all kinds of diseases, from measles to mumps to cooties. And there's a reason vaccines are so safe. They represent years of clinical testing. I mean, you wouldn't believe how long it took scientists to arrive at circle, circle, dot, dot. Vaccine development involves four steps, much like my early 2000s and sync obsession. I crushed on all of them, except Chris. I'm sorry, honey, I tried. You are a good person who made a bad hair decision for like three years. Vaccine development starts with preclinical testing when scientists give vaccines to animals, such as mice, to see if they produce an immune response. No one wants to talk about it, but that's how Stuart Little died. Next comes phase one, when scientists give the vaccine to a small number of people to ensure that it's safe and that it stimulates the immune system. This is followed by phase two, when the vaccine is given to a slightly larger sample size, hundreds of people split into various groups. This tells us how the vaccine acts on different people, for example, on children, the elderly, or on people who will miss Tosh.0. Oh. Drugs just hit them different. Finally, vaccines enter phase three efficacy trials when scientists give thousands of volunteers either the vaccine or a placebo and wait to see what happens. It's like that time the popular kids invited me to a high school party and tricked me into thinking I got drunk on O'Doul's instead of real beer. Phase three determines if vaccines will protect against coronavirus. This phase is especially crucial because it's when the sample size is large enough to reveal rarer side effects that may have been missed. It's also far more responsible than Trump's original plan, offering the virus a job as the new White House press secretary. In order to accurately predict how the vaccine will work, it has to be tested on thousands of people of different ages, ethnicities, sexes, and body sizes. But alarmingly, early COVID-19 vaccine trials have lacked diverse participants. A critical piece of effective trials is having a diverse population of volunteers to ensure that the vaccine is safe and effective for all populations. And right now, some trials may be falling short. Pfizer, amidst their ongoing phase three trial, announced that only 19% of their volunteers were black or Hispanic. These numbers have disappointed some health officials. And out of 45 participants, I was one of two uh, black individuals who participated. Jesus, there was more diversity at the annual speed dating poutine fest in Toronto. Those were great nights. As they say in Canada, if the poutine is filling, the poutine is willing. Unlike moleskin notebooks or the movie Greenberg, the COVID-19 vaccine isn't just for white men. Recruiting black volunteers for testing may be harder due to the country's history of forced medical testing on black Americans, which has resulted in distrust of the medical industry. But black Americans are twice as likely as white Americans to die from COVID-19, and that's why it's so important that they're represented in the trials. If just one person has a serious adverse reaction in a vaccine trial of 1,000 participants, it means more than 300,000 people could experience adverse reactions if everyone in America took it. At least when KFC tested out their donut chicken sandwich, they only risked the RoboCop kernel. It was weird for many reasons, but especially because feeding chicken to a RoboCop will kill him. Historically, vaccine testing moves slowly because the human body responds slowly. The vaccines most likely to be distributed in the coming months are mRNA vaccines. They're a brand new kind of vaccine that deploy a tiny snip of genetic code called messenger RNA to trigger the immune system. They're attractive because they may be cheaper, easier, faster to manufacture, and that ass. This breakthrough science is exciting and we need this vaccine, but we also need to devote enough time to make sure it's safe. It's gonna take at least a year follow up to know a vaccine is safe. So we're not going to know the most important thing for our children and our older people who are going to be sensitive when you're taking this to whether it's safe or not. You just aren't going to know. I must warn that there's also the possibility of negative consequences where certain vaccines can actually enhance the negative effect of the infection. That warning is so stressful, even Fauci couldn't look us in the eye to say it. Either that or his notes included a diagram of that hot ass. Just as we need the vaccine to be safe, we also need people to trust it. In order for it to be effective, an estimated 200 million Americans have to take it. And folks, it is not looking so good. Here's the NBC News Survey Monkey poll. Um, less than half of Americans even want a vaccine at this point. Would you get a government approved COVID-19 vaccine? Only 44% of the country says yes, 32% not sure, 22% 
say no. So even if we had it, it's not clear that everyone trusts the government anymore and, and plans to take it. If a vaccine is 50% effective, as the FDA has promised it will be, but only 44% of people take it, that means only 22% of people are protected. I mean, can you imagine if you could only protect 22% of NSYNC? That's only enough to save Justin Timberlake and Chris Kirkpatrick's old hair. And why would you want to save either? A lot is riding on the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine. In addition to fighting this pandemic, any misstep, be it in efficacy, messaging, or distribution, could embolden anti-vaxxers and erode America's already shaky public trust in vaccines. But make no mistake, we need vaccines. Vaccines are the only reason people don't get smallpox and Jonas Salk got laid. Most importantly, we need to trust our government to distribute a vaccine based on when it's safe and effective, not when it's most politically valuable. If Trump rushes a vaccine before it's ready, there's a chance things could get really ugly. Much like Chris Kirkpatrick's hair circa 1998. I'm sorry, Chris, it's just true. If you like this video, hit subscribe and let me know in the comments below. And if you didn't like this video, I'm sure you've already left a comment. Thank you so much.